Today we're replacing this solar panel cable entry box from a double to a four point entry box. This is simply just a device that allows you to run your solar panels into your house. This is made in the USA and it is a double gang box so it's simple to replace if you happen to damage it and it's for old work. Now I've been using this older one which this is still available and I will leave a link below so you can find it but I wanted more entry points so that's why I'm replacing it. It's just simply some wires with some WAGO connectors which I'm still not too fond of but they do work. Now the new box does come pre-wired with WAGOs already but I did notice wiring is actually backward for my use which I will explain that later. But this box I think I'm going to find a piece of conduit so I can make an easy transition from inside to outside plus I have to enlarge my hole a little bit. Now what I'm using is just a piece of rigid conduit plus a couple chase nipples so I'll have one on each side of the box, one for the inside box and also one for the outside box which this will make my cable entry or pass through much easier. Now I did add some sealing putty to seal off the conduit and then I did add this weatherproof heavy duty enclosure. And because I have lap siding I had to use a spacer board which I'll have to take this all apart because I'm going to be painting my house in about a month. Now we need to make some pigtails which will need four positives and four negatives. These wire strippers from Klein Tools make quick work of stripping wire or you could use an older type, it's up to you, but I found that this does shave a lot of time. Now the Wagyu connectors are good for 450 volts and also 41 amps. I still don't really trust them that much, but I'm trying to get used to it. Again, being that they are just a spring, I decided to tape them off anyway. And now that we have our pigtails connected, go ahead and tape off the ends, that way you keep the pairs together. Now before I forget, I had to rewire this and actually swap the black to the red wire because this was wired wrong from the factory, at least for my use. The positive is actually that male plug, so if I want to plug in extensions and also utilize power stations, I need that to be a positive on that male plug. Just like if I was plugging into this solar panel, you can see that the positive wire is a male plug as well. We can now pass our cables through, which eight cables actually goes through pretty well, and we still have enough room in our box after closing this up. Although I still think I like the design of the old box better, where the cables do go straight down versus out. Now I'm going to add some painter's tape, which this is going to act as a temporary label until I get some permanent ones to number my cables. Now we need to strip all the ends of our cables. Now I did a video tutorial on this a few years ago with a male pin and a female pin and these simply go together always and I'll show you how this works. You have a male pin with a female connector. They go together. The same thing with this male connector and this female pin. As long as you keep the female and the male together you will always be correct. Now because this solar panel has a male positive that means all of my connections for the positives are going to be female. So that means this one and all my other reds are going to have a female connector with a male pin. Again, just keep the opposites together as opposites attract and you won't have any problem putting the wrong pin with the wrong connector. Now for most of these crimps that you'll do at home, you just start on the inside and then I like to do a second one in the middle, which most of these you can buy online and I will leave something down below that you can look at. They're not as good as the ones that we use in the field, but they do work for the DIYer. And now you just simply slide up the compression sleeve along with a nut, tighten this down, and they do make a torque tool, which after you get done doing your other connectors, then you can go ahead and torque them all at the same time if you like. That's up to you. Now I don't have my second tool with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this one down by hand really quick. And basically you'll know because you'll hear a click a couple times or it's all the way seated. And now that we have all our connectors done, we can go ahead and start marking them out. And so I simply plugged in a solar panel and it's now running through inside. So now we have to get a test meter just to see which one we are plugged into. And now that you can see some voltage, we can go ahead and mark these out. I'm going to label this one as number four 
and then I'll end up having the top one as number two, so my evens will be on the right, and my odds will be on the left. So one, two on top, and three and four on the bottom. And now just go through each one and label each cable accordingly to the one that you have plugged into the solar panel and the designated connectors inside. And you could also label your cable, which I will relabel these with a black pin. Now I am only using two of these at the moment, so I'm going to add a fuse on each one of the positives. And because you can use these fuses either direction, I'm going to put the positive into the female side. That way I still have a female connector. That way when I plug this in, it works accordingly. And then we just have to do a little bit of wire cleanup. And then this part is pretty much done. And now I just have to do a little bit of wire cleanup on the inside, but I can now start charging up my home battery backup system.